Norman Beale didn't foresee a three-acre garden when he first moved to Raleigh, North Carolina six years ago, especially since his lot was only one acre. But gardening on his neighbor's land is only one of the things that sets Norm apart. The story of the garden and the gardener on A Gardener's Diary. Norman Beale's garden in Raleigh, North Carolina, overflows onto his neighbor's properties, and they don't mind a bit. But that's only part of the story. There's also his gardening outfit. His friends refer to it as the uniform. I'm known in, in the gardening circles around here as the, the man who wears the hat, because I have a sun problem, and I always have to wear a hat and gloves when I go outside, and long sleeves. Another thing is, I like blue dress shirts and khaki pants, and that's the only thing I ever wear, whether working or socializing. The names of the different areas in this eclectic garden also set it apart. A tour through Norm's garden is like a trip around the world. There's the Lake District, named after the legendary landscape of Wordsworth and Beatrix Potter in Northern England. The Steppes, a reference to the vast plains of Central Asia. There's even Mount Mitchell Nana. Nana is the botanical name used to identify dwarf varieties of plants. We're standing on the side of a pretty big hill at the very back of your property. Yes, this hill is the soil that was taken out of the lake when they dug it. And it was here all covered with vines and I decided to improve it. And it has a special name? Yes, I call it Mount Mitchell Nana, Mount Mitchell being the tallest peak on the east coast, this being the lowest. It's still a pretty nice sized mountain to have in your backyard. Yes, I'm very pleased with it. I was very lucky to have it here. And Mount Mitchell is where? It's in Asheville, near Asheville. So we're in North Carolina and you can go to the biggest mountain or the smallest That's one. That's right. And it's a perfect way to display a plant that you probably would find on Mount Mitchell, the Crishogonum virginianum, our native green and gold. And I've seen it growing in Pennsylvania and... Um, yes, it'll grow pro probably anywhere on the east coast and it's a very long, long blooming plant. It blooms probably eight to nine months of the year. And even when it's not blooming, it's got good looking foliage and it can grow not only in shade, but a good bit of sun. That's correct. It will grow in full sun, but it prefers some shade. Well, the Galax and the green and gold, the Crishogonum, that's just, that's what you'd find on the mountains. Yes. And this Japanese maple is just delicate and lovely. Yeah, this is a fairly new one. It's called red filigree lace, very fine foliage. And that's an Acer palmatum selection? Yes. And the way that it cascades down, that's its natural habit? It is. This needs to be staked and, and trained to uh, get a good trunk on it. So you've got your own sort of, I don't know, you've created a mountainside woodland garden right here. Yeah, I like to have as many variations in topography as I can possibly get. This area is, is almost like a set of steps. I do call it the steps. And how did this area come about? Well, this used to be an old uh, road that washed badly. And I knew I had to do something to nail it down. And this suddenly occurred to me that I could terrace it with the railroad ties and then put stepping stones down it. And you've used lots of conifers and other evergreens for spears or spires. Yes. I. I restricted to the very slim ones so I could put more of them in and they wouldn't take up too much space. Has a dramatic effect and then you've got all these wonderful ground covers, thyme and oregano. Yes, it's worked very well. Would you describe your style of gardening as, how would you describe your style of gardening? Cause you're informal. Informal. But you you don't limit yourself to just trees and shrubs or herbaceous plants. You've got this lovely combination here with the barberry and penstemons and wallflower. How do you come up with your combinations? 
Well, I like everything in an informal arrangement. I don't like any straight lines. And I never worry about color combos when I plant. I just plant whatever I have or whatever I like. And I don't think anything ever clashes in nature. Well, you've come up with a good one here with this snapdragon, which has almost fiery looking blooms with orange and pink and red in them. And it plays off of that burgundy of the barberry. Yeah, well, that was just chance. I picked up a six pack of those in a nursery last fall. I like the color. Plugged them in, forgot about them, and they died down and then came back this spring beautifully. And uh, so I'm real pleased with the way they've done. I like the way you let plants grow together. You don't seem to Yeah, mind. I, like, I like the way they intermingle like that and fill up the spaces. Norm, this is a berm that you've created here with all these, a lot of them look to be almost Mediterranean type plants. Most of them are. And this is just a load of concrete sand dumped here and sculpted into the shape that I wanted. And the plants are put in and then I put about an inch of uh, pea gravel, regular pea gravel on top just for looks and to keep it from washing. And how long has this been here? One year. So uh, some things have come back that have overwintered or? Yes, most, most all of them came back. I, I lost maybe two or three over winter. So what was your inspiration for sand, pure sand? Just the fact that you couldn't grow them in regular soil? Yes, to, to get the perfect drainage that a lot of these plants need. And the iris are thriving. That apricot iris is particularly beautiful. And this color is just lovely. Yes, that's one of the rebloomers called Amanda Irwin that was put in a year ago as a single fan and it reblooms throughout the season. So you from one fan? Yes. Wow. So it's not only is it a rebloomer, it's vigorous. It's much more vigorous than the regular iris. And that comes from is that from breeding old fashioned bearded iris? So yes. That they have? Yes. We have several breeders around the country that just deal exclusively in reblooming iris. A tremendous variety of plants thrive in Norman Beale's garden in Raleigh, North Carolina. Norm says he first got hooked on gardening when he helped out in his grandmother's garden at age three. Later in life, he made it his career. My occupation was as a horticulturalist, and I was an extension agent for horticulture in Newport News, Virginia. And I retired and moved to Raleigh to be near the NC State Arboretum, which is the fount of so many new plants and so much horticultural lore. I've planted most of the trees on the property. I try to use small growing trees that won't, won't get out of, out of size and ones with uh, colored foliage, yellow foliage or red foliage, weeping trees with sinuous stems and, and nicely cascading foliage and as much variety as I could find in, in trees. Norm, we're in Raleigh, North Carolina and it's springtime. How much land do you garden if you combine all the properties? About three acres. Three acres? Mm -hmm. Where do you find time to take to manage maintain three acres of garden? Well, 24 hours a day seems to be just about adequate. <laughs> so you don't sleep? Not very much. Not. Well, that's an advantage for you. Yes. And one of your grand specimens right behind you is just, the foliage is so beautiful and I'm keen on weeping trees. This looks like a good candidate for southern gardens. and This is a very good one for any southern gardens and I would imagine it's hardy probably into zone six since it comes from a mountainous area of China. This is weeping Chinese hackberry, Celtis sinensis, green cascade. A uh, nurseryman in Chapel Hill who's Chinese went back to China and found a weeping bright in an old temple and brought back some seeds and this is one of the best seedlings and they've named it Green Cascade. And it's, it's quite nice throughout the season, shiny leaves, doesn't get any insects or disease problems and turns gold in the fall. And how long has this specimen been here? Six years from a rooted cutting. From a rooted cutting, so it wasn't very big. 
No, no, about a, about a foot, foot high, I guess. About a foot high. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm not, there are some hackberries I don't like, but I think this is one I would add to my own garden. Yes, the form of it, I think, is pretty spectacular. Celtis sinensis. Right. My one acre of land that I started with was rapidly planted, and then I started asking neighbors if I could plant this and that on just the occasional plant on their property. And they quickly caught the fever and finally said, yes, do anything you want over here. Well, he came and asked me one day, would I mind if he would uh, develop the hill that was in this, in this area? And I told him to go to it. He is an excellent neighbor. We're actually standing in your neighbor's front yard out by your very busy street. Correct. And these beds are gardens that you've actually planted. Yes, one year ago I brought in the soil to form those berms. So what was the slope like before you brought the soil in? The shoulder of the road dropped off about four feet and there was no room to park there, so I brought in 30 truckloads of soil to extend it out some to give some parking space up here for buses and, and cars. And of course, it didn't have anything to do with wanting to display more plants on the Oh no, embankment. not at all. And you've got daylilies here, and you've got this wonderful little rose. It almost looks like a miniature rose, but it's, it's not one of those little miniatures. It is miniature in foliage and flower size, but it does grow up to about two feet tall and about three feet wide. It's called Pink Pet. It's an ever bloomer. Wonderful foliage, never has any problems, never needs spraying. And what's the age on the size with that plant? That plant is about eight months old from a cutting. Eight months old from a rooted cutting? Yes. Norman Beale is a retired horticulturist. Six years ago, he started this garden in Raleigh, North Carolina. Not only has he filled the property with plants, he's even changed the shape of the landscape. Norm, what I notice about your property is that it slopes down to this lake, and you have changed the contour with this dry stack wall, and then you've also got berms in certain areas. Yes, I had a lot of erosion problems here. There were big gullies throughout this hill, and I had to put in the dry stack and the berms to channel the water. And it's also a great way to display some of the herbaceous plants. Yes, I think berms display much better than a ground bed. And behind us is this wall of weeping plants with that variegated dogwood punctuating the end of the scene there. Yes, that happened by mistake. Uh, I didn't realize I was planting all those weepers together. It just happened to be a spot and I had a weeper and I wasn't looking what was around it, but it seemed to work out all right. And that variegated dogwood looks, I know that, especially here in the South and in Raleigh and in Zone 7, we have hot, hot summers and that color looks so vibrant. Will that fade as the... No, it will not. That's one called Daybreak, and it's the best one that I've found. It does very well in full sun, fast growing. Not a good bloomer, but you don't grow it for the bloom. I haven't had any problems with it, whatever. So it's Cornus Florida Daybreak? Yes. So it's a selection of our native dogwood? It is, and it grows much better than the green leaf one normally. And this is the Lake District? Are we in the Lake District We're yet? We're in the Lake District. And is this your property? No, this belongs to the golf course, which is just over behind us. So they have a lake, and you decided you'd like to have an, add another lake for them? Yes, this is the little lake. This Dug is it six years ago. And created an island in the center? Use the soil out of the lake to, to build the island, yes. Did you design and construct the arbor that's on your island as well? I drew the design and had a carpenter come in and build it. I see you've got, it looks like a selection of a white wisteria that's finishing. It is, Wisteria Clara Mac, one of our natives that always blooms late and never gets a frost. Then this garden back here now, is that your property? No, that's Mr. Brown's property, my next door neighbor, the hill. and. That was heavily wooded and the last Hurricane Fran blew all the trees down. 
and he gave me permission to uh, get rid of the trees and stumps and do what I would, so I decided to landscape it and did. Well, this lake is a, a lovely setting, and it, it's hard to believe it, uh, that it's only been here for six years. The plantings are pretty mature. Yes, they are. It's good soil, and I've kept them fertilized, and they obviously get plenty of water. And I love the classic weeping willow on the other side. Yeah, that's, that's a very nice narrow one. And on this side, it looks as if it's a bog garden. That sorts. is a bog garden. It was a dry lake area. I couldn't grow anything in it. Uh, I had to bring in a bunch of topsoil and fill that in. Added four feet to the lake to bring it up high enough to be a bog. So this is really this whole area from the lake that already existed on the golf course to the bog to the new lake that you put in is all about water. All about water. The only thing that makes me a little bit nervous, Norm, is you don't have a rail on this side of the bridge. Well, I don't like to follow the normal pattern. Everybody else has double rails. I decided to have one. I like asymmetry in the garden. Nobody's ever jumped off here. Nobody's ever jumped or <laughs> fallen off. Norman Beale has no formal plan for his garden in Raleigh, North Carolina. He might be inspired by a certain collection of plants or even by a garden structure that catches his eye. You don't have a lot of structures in your garden, but this arbor makes a very welcoming entrance and frames the view looking this way and then looking back that way. Yes, that was hand built. I saw it in a garden show immediately commissioned one to be built, and then I, I built the rest of the berms and the garden in this area around it. And the planting that anchors the arbor to the garden, really, it's not only the evergreens, like the camisiparis right here on this side, and the it looks like a weeping holly of some sort. Yes, weeping yopon. But this beautiful kusa dogwood and the other camisiparis, and then you, as it, we come down the hill, you've banked it up with hardy geraniums and this beautiful blue salvia. Yeah, that's salvia transylvanica. It blooms throughout the season. Very good one. So when I look around your garden, I really get the sense that the whole garden is a mixed border. Absolutely. And the main emphasis is on long seasonal bloom. You've got these mature maples here in this crepe myrtle. Did you start with large maple trees? No, I planted the seeds for those in 90. So that was over 10 years ago? Yes. And from a seed, now you've got these beautiful specimen trees? Yes, they grow very rapidly, Japanese maples. And I like this aster-looking plant, or at least it looks related to aster. Yes, that's an, a calamaris. It's an ever bloomer. It blooms, blooms, starts blooming in March and continues right on up till freezing weather. And it gets a fair bit of sun here, but then it's also in a little bit of shade. Yeah, it gets afternoon shade. This plant does beautifully in full sun or partial shade and in it, any kind of soil. And it's a hardy perennial in zone Completely 7. Completely hardy, yes. But it's a beautiful plant. Yes, it is. It's, it's a good ever bloomer. And you don't cut it back to get a second flush of bloom, it no, just continues it to just bloom. just continues blooming on the... So no deadheading? No deadheading at all. Some of the greatest rewards that I get from my garden is sharing it with friends. And also going out for early morning strolls on my own and seeing how fresh everything looks and hearing the bird song. Um, it's just all very gratifying. Thank you. 